Hi, I'm Keegan, and this is A Bunch of Gamers. This is our 50th episode of Werewolf the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition. I'm going to go around and have my players introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Sam. I play Cora. She is an Arun in the Get of Inris. I'm Tyler, and I play Kyle. He's 19, a Philodox, and has found his purpose with the Garu. He's known as Guards the Low, Child of Gaia. Hi, I'm George. I play Roy, also known as Mindscape. He is a Ragabosh with the Stargazers. Hi, I'm Jade. I play Morgan, Bloodsinger Trevor Lane. She is a Galliard of Fianna. Hi, I'm Adam. I'll be playing as the stand-in character, Michael, uh, captures the moment. He's a Galliard and a Glasswalker. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm playing Zeb, known amongst the Guru, as speaks with Sweet Whispers. He is a third yard of the Silent Striders. Last time... You faced a crushing defeat at the hands of some Black Spiral Dancers. Two pack members killed. Not all was lost, however, as you had gathered key information and you were able to return to the Sept. It is here that you have done research and found the location of the, doc the doctor who developed the War Wolf Serum, Dr. Kevin McAllister. You had also found out from the Master of Right that... There is a way to destroy the information in the Umbra without having to try and hack into the computer, which is by following the spirit paths and entering the spiritual impression of the server and seeking the information on your own and destroying its spiritual reflection and thus destroying its physical impression. You've just finished up breakfast and are beginning your plans. How would you like to go about your day and trying to get to Dr. McAllister? Uh, well, I think what Michael is going to do, because the description you gave me of him, he's a techie guy. He knows his computers. And one thing I know techie guys do is you keep a bunch of notes. So he's probably going to pour over and maybe take notes of like how internet servers work or how like memory stored servers work okay uh how far away is his house from the sept pretty far he actually lives out in the suburbs okay. as is which is on uh which is predictable given that he has a well-paying job in the city right his house is in the nicer areas of the lake of lakewood uh, and what day of the week is it? Let us see. It is... I just took the date from last time. It is May 30th. So, it is May 30th, 2019. So, a Thursday, I think? Yeah. We could go there, uh, scope it out during the day, um, whether in the Umber or not, find out, like, if he has kids living there, a wife, that kind of thing, a husband, whatever. That way we can, well, for one, figure out if there are going to be other casualties. Uh, we probably want to kill them at night. Less likely to be seen through a window or something like that. Hmm. Sounds like a plan. Is there anything else we're looking to gain other than <laughs> vengeance? I understand vengeance is mighty important to the story of, of, of how we live, but what else... Well, as much as I want vengeance, I would argue destroying him means that this data, this serum will likely not be recreated in the future after we destroy the data. Um, but, but how do we know that he doesn't have other people that have the same information? Realistically, I mean, we, we can try and interrogate him, but if we don't kill him immediately there's a much higher chance of us failing. That's a good point. Uh, the last time we did a raid on someone's house, um, it was trapped, like had explosives and, and things of that nature in it. We still managed to kill that person, but hmm. it, it could turn into a much bigger thing. And given the nature of the facility, his, his house probably is bugged. Hmm. Depends on how much it would be. It depends on how much he was a peon and how much he was actually someone of, of meaning and, and stature and substance. Do we have a picture of him? 
this this man, this person? I'm gonna say you do. Okay. Pretty, pretty good looking man actually. Uh, about 45, trim, uh, a trim ginger beard with hints of gray starting to form. Looks isn't athletic by any means, but clearly cares about his health. Okay, so it's a Thursday right now. What time of day is it? You said morning. Like, yeah, it's morning. Time to start work. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So whoever we send to trail this guy could possibly meet him along his way to work. He's probably on his way right now. So are we sending someone to trail him, or are we just going to his house to figure out, like, if he has kids and a significant other or whatever? I think maybe we can send one to trail him and one to the house, unless that's stretching too thin right there. Let me look into something momentarily. Keegan, I'm going to attempt to communicate with the pigeon spirit that I spoke to before. I'll do it from inside inside the cairn here. Okay. Um, expending, uh, I, do I, need to do, I need to do the roll for someone in that spirit again. Yes, you do. So, and then roll Gnosis for him to manifest on the side of the gauntlet. Difficulty four. The spirit arrives cooing as it makes itself manifest. It is in the form of a of a rather large pigeon, but not overly large like it would be in the spirit world. Okay. It looks at you, its eyes kind of shaking, its pupils dilating on occasion, speaking up, why have you called me? We had spoken before about some men that you had seen, and you had asked me if I could, or at least for your, for your pigeons here in the world, to destroy some of the glass spirits and disrupt them that would harm them. I have done so, but I have a question for you now about a very specific man, and I'm wondering if you had seen him. I know before you had told me the number of Fomori were more than the, the toes on your feet, but I will... Can I show, we have like a proud of the picture I can show him? Yeah. Okay. I will show the, or screen whatever I have to do. I will show the medium to convey this, this person's this person's picture, Kevin McAllister's picture. Hmm. He is a friend to my kin. He is. Yes. How oh, so? He feeds them? Yes, he sits on a bench and he feeds them and he watches them. When does he do this? When the sun reaches, when Helios reaches its zenith. Have your kin seen him this morning or can you find out where he is this morning? They would have to look. The city is busy and there are so many roving steel deer that it is difficult to discern one man from it, even from my mortal kin. I could tell you when he gets to the place place that he leaves before he feeds my kin. That would be excellent. It shall be done. But for this, you must sit on the park, the park bench and feed my kin. This I will do. Then the pact is sealed and the pigeon vanishes back into the umbra. As much as I don't want to put any of well i'll put our fates in the hands of pigeons more than any man uh however at least we know well what i have learned our the truncated cliff notes version here he goes out and feeds the pigeons at lunchtime and there's a portion from the building from which he emerges odds are he might already be at work and it's much more hard it's much more difficult for birds to spot one man in traffic this is an avenue i present to you the favor that i have to do to feed his kin easy enough and i can at least be out there to keep a lookout for this man um a method no well if he misses the appointment we know he didn't come to work that seals off one avenue maybe maybe this is a fool's errand but an idea it could be all right so i assume that he's feeding them at noon then since i mean at least roughly noon how how long do we have i guess before that happens it's a while it's early in the morning so this okay. pigeon was trying to say that he's probably driving to work and trying to find one guy in traffic, even with the pigeons of the city, is going to be tough. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, I mean, since this guy's house is so far away, we can probably... S Will the pigeon be able to find us, like in the Umbra, if we aren't right here? Yes. Okay. Um, then we could start heading over to where his house is. And if the pigeon doesn't find us by let's say one then it's possible that he's not at work today hmm. 
and it might be more dangerous to try and investigate his house since there's a good chance he he might just be there. That that kind of covers both bases right there. You stop by the house first, and if he's there, he's there. And then if not, he probably went somewhere else, possibly to the park or to uh, work. So I guess the question now is, who are we going to send? What's stopping all of you from going? Right. Hmm. That's a good point. Uh, so, how, like, since breakfast, how long has it been? Uh, you probably spent an hour eating, hour and a half, so it's probably 9.30, 10.30. Okay, I think that's that's plenty of time for early morning note-taking, so I guess I'll just get my pack ready, like my, you know, stuff I'll bring. Not your pack pack, as they're all dead. Yes. Classic. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> What a reminder. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny because of the deep well of sadness. Yes. So you guys start heading out. Are you going via the physical or the umbral world? uh, I'll put in my argument for Michael being in the physical because it says here on his uh, crafts that it's photography. Does he have a camera? Yes. It is bound to him as well. Oh, okay. So is this a camera that could work in the Umbra and in uh, the physical? Yeah, with the exception of places that are heavily, heavily powered by the wild, then the camera gets a little wonky. But overall, yes. Okay, so if I were to, say, take a picture in the Umbra of a floating thing that was something in the physical, would I see? It would just be the Umbra thing. Okay. Never mind then. So I would think that his camera would be of more use in the physical. Wouldn't looking at his house from the Umbra be more more of use for us for, for this this end? Especially if we're looking for wards, traps. Maybe a two pronged? So I mean let's let's start out in the Umbra to make sure I don't know, that like if he has a significant other they're not a Fomori or some shit. Um if they're home but then otherwise once we've made sure that like it's clear then maybe we can go into the physical and do some more scouting because i don't like if it's like a tripwire or something that's going to fire you know like a a silver bomb of some sort like we won't see it in the umbra okay so i mean i think both gain us important information so like cover the spiritual traps first see if there's they're there and then get to the physical traps Sounds good to me. Okay. You travel via the Umbra. And you get to the home with relatively no problems. The area here is far more nature-like. As you see these glistening pools of water floating in the air amidst a vast forest. And plains and large grass fields mixing together into a beautiful mountain scene. Mm. Uh, Michael will take his camera out and he'll start taking pictures. Okay. Zeb, you get the inclination that this suburb isn't old enough, nor does it have enough strong emotional resonance to really form in the Umbra, which means the emotional resonance of the forest that was here before remains. Yep. Though, of course, you do see the pattern spiders moving around, and there are the vague outlines of houses in what that look like cobwebs hanging on the trees. Are we able to see the addresses? Uh, like a, we- a weaved-up address of some sort? You get some idea you can actually attempt to look on the other side of the gauntlet it is very difficult but it is doable would that be a gnosis roll it would be gnosis plus the gauntlet of this area or it'd be a gnosis difficulty is the gauntlet of this area plus three i believe Mm, that'd probably be really difficult the real real important thing you can i'll be looking for any evidence of corruption of these weaver spiders However okay. small, you know, that standard black ichor, yeah. something, anything hidden here. Okay. Could I get 
uh, perception occult. Absolutely. Standard difficulty? Standard difficulty. It doesn't appear to be so. The spiders here seem to be simply draining the wild and natural energies of this place as the suburb becomes more established. Um, are there any of these... Uh, could, I want to make a roll to see if any of these uh, houses maybe have some sort of like more weaver presence. If that makes sense. Okay. Yes, you can. Uh, we'll do a uh, perception investigation. Okay. Difficulty six. Two. There are a few. It looks like these are sort of uh, local businesses, maybe tech businesses that are starting to spring up in the suburbs here. They're small, so they're gathering spiders, but you do notice that there are spiders crawling around in this place. You also take note that there are no shadow impressions that you would typically see if someone is spiritually enlightened, or at least you don't think so, given that there are still shadows here from the trees that are cast. Uh, is there one of these outlined buildings nearby? Like, really close by? Yeah, you're on a city. You're just on like a suburban street, so there's several of the smaller ones. Okay. Uh, so from what you said, we can't tell if there's anything like living here, other than like the shadows of the trees. You said. So the yeah. So what I mean is, is that if there's something that has spiritual gnosis on the other side of the gauntlet, like if there was a werewolf in the physical world. If you looked on the ground, you would see a werewolf's shadow in whatever form they're in. Mm. On the ground where he's standing. Okay. Which means you could look for it, but it also means that you might not see it just because there are natural shadows that happen in the umber as well. Mm, okay. That throws out my plan. Uh, you can peek, and because the difficulty for peeking caps at diff 9 looking through the other side. Um, with the exception, of course, science areas, you can't do that. But you can peek at difficulty nine if you so choose. Just be aware that if you peek, you will have no sensual or uh, sense reinforcement on this side of the gauntlet. All your senses would be in the physical world, and or all your yeah, all your senses will be in the physical world, but your body will still be in the umbra. Mm, okay. What happens if you botch that roll? You see into the torments of the worm and have to check for a frenzy. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Get caught in the gauntlet. Oh. Yeah, well, for peeking specifically. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll roll it. All right. It's worth the risk. Oh, I didn't botch. <laughs> Woo! Well, I might have suggested it's on a fool's errand, but at least it confirms there are no banes or lingering spirits here, as so far as we can tell. This this individual might be the most mundane creature in this city. Mm, possibly. So, we haven't seen anything strange, like any wards. Uh, well, we haven't really been looking for wards. Does anyone else want to try peeking? I'll take a peek. What is it? Uh, perception... No, it's uh, just Gnosis, difficulty 9. Oh, okay. I'll take a jab at it. Oh, at least I didn't botch it. <laughs> <laughs> All we want to know is if he's here, correct? Yeah. Well, and that we're in the right, exact right place. You want to see the, they want to see the, uh, the address number, because you know you're on the right street area, but now you need to know the exact address to see it. And we want to know if he's home, but we also want to see his house, correct? Yes. Anybody else want to give it a shot? I guess I can give it a shot. Okay. Uh, Gnosis Diff 9, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I did but not watch it. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a close call city, isn't it? Uh, Breaking right. ones. Keegan, I'm going to try to do a summon on, on just on this side um, to Jesus speak with Christ. a glass spirit. Okay. I want to look at the sky's reflection amongst his mortal kin on that side to see if there's a beautiful glass surface that this man's face is in right now that's in the general area that we're in. Okay. I don't I won't pull him into the physical world, it's just here, yeah. 
Yeah, so you would just be a summon roll. No need to roll okay. no assist. All right. Difficulty six because of the rating around here, or is nope. Yeah, there's no. Difficulty? It's uh, just the difficulty for a gaffling. For a gaffling, okay. Four. Uh, so the glass spirit arrives. All right. As it's a swirl of sh glass shards. Okay. What do you want? Um, I will give a gnosis to him. I want you to shine and reflect as your as your kin should, as they must. I look for one man's face reflected in the glory of your kin that are here, perhaps ignored by him, but I want to know if he is nearby on this this area and will show the picture of that man. As he Does looks, he reflect amongst your kin? As he looks, as you see like little mirrors starting to form and the shards coming together and then breaking apart, forming, shattering. I do not see him. Thank you. Have you seen him? Yes. Saw him earlier. Has he departed in his steel chariot? Yes, he took his car to work. How many? Does he have kin or others that live in his home with him? Yes. Four. Three of them are quite vain. Ah. They gaze upon me quite often. There are more than three. How many are there total? There is a total of four besides him. Three of them are children? Yes. Or at are least younglings. Are, looks young. are they home now? Yes, two are. Which home is his? You see that one there? As you see the kind of vague outline, it's pretty nice overall. Uh, like the outline, the area is not overly weaverish either. He lives there. That one. Thank you. May those that gaze upon you see what they must see. Although they might not. And I'll let him go. Well, May my kin's that, oh. teeth cut shallow. Alright, so three kids, spouse, two of the kids, two people are at home right now in the house, and that's the one. He's already left for work. Which means they didn't call him off. Now it doesn't mean he's going to work, but he's definitely left. Mm, nice job. So This is all the use I have, Michael. After that, this is all up to you, warriors. Well, shall we take a gander? Yeah, we can move closer to his We're... house. Do you want to cross over? I want. I, I say we stay in the Umbra still and check out the house. Okay. And see if maybe they have some sort of spiritual connection. Maybe not. So I'll need perception investigation. Difficulty seven, just because of the shadows already existing. Looking around, there doesn't appear to be any additional shadows besides those cast by the trees, the birds, and the insects here. So we need to discuss what we want to do specifically. Obviously, we are going to kill him, uh, but where we kill him can affect how many others we have to kill, and I would prefer not to kill his children. Right. We need to make it look like it's something that happened either on the way home or while he was out and about somehow. So we intercept him while he's feeding pigeons at lunch? Does it that not could... work? Hmm. I think our Maybe. best bet could be the pigeons in the park. Maybe some sort of distraction to get him away from his routine. Uh, out of character. Uh, Mr. GM. Yes. Uh, I have a gift called Distractions. What does that do? You roll a, a Charisma performance, and it subtracts dice from the enemy's die pool. Mm hmm. Okay. At noontime, which is a time where we know where he should be. And if he's not where he should be, that means we have to go and be a little bit more industrious and looking for okay. him. Okay. Well, out of the way before he gets home. To be clear, though, his noontime ritual, like, is that on work grounds? Because that doesn't necessarily alleviate those difficulties if it is. Well, the pigeon spirit did say park, but pigeon spirit. Park. They also like him. Yeah. So that might put us in bad with those spirits. Well, especially if we kill him in front of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so. Well, there might be just more to homicide than this, right? It might be a matter of you 
gets that individual and very well, yes, he might very well be dead, but if he's I don't doubt the machinations of the Dark Ones in this, and I do not also underestimate the fact that plenty of people are patsies, and so this fool's name got thrown out there on the internet to be associated with this. He might not give us anything that we need other than satiating bloodlust because he's associated with it, and very well to that. That's fine. Just just be aware this might be a, a mighty dead end that we're following here. The faster the better before we're, we're caught somewhere else, I think. Hmm. So then, hear me out, I got an idea. So, if he does end up in the park, he probably either walked there or took a vehicle there. If he took a vehicle there, I could possibly be able to jam up the engine and make him late or something, make him have to deal with his vehicle. And then from there, we could possibly get him somewhere like an auto store something like that and then maybe along the way we take care of them i know it's very vague but that's just what i'm thinking right now i mean if we do right. something like that we run a move lot of risk shoulder keegan helps i'll move my hand to my shoulder okay look at it look to the sky as you see a pigeon circling nodding to tell show you that it gave you the signal in the best way a pigeon knows how. Very well. I will look at the group. He's leaving work. As you all see him turn and uh, Zeb has pigeon droppings on his uh, shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that brings back memories. Yeah. Shall we go? Uh, will the pigeon lead us to the park? or where he's going to go. You can attempt to follow it. I will. Let's do it. You all shift into lupus and chase the pigeon as quickly as possible as you do arrive at the park in the Umbra. It's a park that's about three blocks from from work. Pretty, pretty simple looking in the Umbra. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing you would expect from a city park. It looks very naturalistic on the surface, but looking closer, you notice that the bark is crafted with strands of spider silk and that there are a large number of patterned spiders almost masquerading as other animal spirits as they seem to tightly control this area. Uh, how large is it? How dense with trees and foliage and whatnot? It is not it's mostly grass there is a small corner with trees are there is, is there any sort of evidence of like park benches that look like weaved cobwebs of the weaver that is uh more difficult to determine mm, okay because thinking out loud again what if we were able to find whatever park bench he's sitting at in the umbra and is there some sort of power where one could reach through the gauntlet and, I don't know, slit his throat and then just pull the arm back? <laughs> there are gifts for it, and those are higher-ranked gifts. I, yeah, I figured. <laughs> this, this guy's just, just, you know, he's vanilla ice cream. We're going to probably have to cross over to engage with him. We might not even see him walk by us. How useless is this man if he's going out on a lunch break after multiple group and BSDs have attacked this building. Uh, he doesn't necessarily know about that, and unless the company deigns to tell him about something like this, I, I don't see... So, and I, I don't see why they would, I suppose, if they want to keep him calm and working there. So as we know, this man probably just has a really loose affiliation with wh who we're seeking like i want vengeance as much as any of you but i don't want us killing an innocent no we're killing him i will not negotiate that what he is doing is monstrous and has the potential to destroy all of gaia should the garu fall whether he's that ignorant of that or not we're a bit divided here how do you think we should proceed 
Yes, I think that we do need to kill him before he gets home. Um, whether it's here at the park or on the way home, that is that can still be up for discussion. But I do think that we need to kill him before he gets home. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. let's let's leave the Umbra though, so yeah. that we can like figure out if we even have the opportunity to kill him right now. Because if this park is bustling with people, we don't. Yeah, that's a so good. Let's at least make sure that it's possible right now. Perfect. All right. So All right. Each pack need needs find... to do a gnosis roll. We're just going to assume you found a place with a reflective surface. It's diff uh, diff six here. Yes. We do Roy, it. You successfully you. get Morgan and yourself to the um, out of the Umbra immediately. Woo. Hmm. Gasp. Oof. Cora Not and the rest of Fomori's Bane are stuck in the Umbra for another hour. Can I oh. mulligan? <laughs> you can mulligan. Did I mulligan watch. Fomori's Bane? <laughs> um, it might not be necessary, but... We but already got people that are there. Enough. Yeah. Let's, let's just watch over from this side. All right. Okay. So, Morgan, Roy... Zeb and Michael, you all see him at the bench. There's not a lot of people here. In fact, they're further out. He's closer into the like heart of the heart of the park. Is he enjoying himself? That bastard. And he seems to be. That son of a bitch. <laughs> Hi. Can I turn to see where that voice came from? Oh, it's from the bench. It's him. Ah. Wait, wait were you were nearby? Up? Like, like, holy shoot. Like, like I had he, no idea we were so close to him. That well, you got close. Like, oh, hey. you, you're close enough to where he can hear you because you're close enough to see him now. And that was his perception alertness check. So if you're, you can see him, there is a chance he can see you. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Out of character, pause. Now no. what? <laughs> now we have Woody Banter and see how in the thrall of the worm he is. I'm going to sense worm and then say hello. Okay, perception occult. Standard diff. Uh, yes. The smell of the worm wafts off of him. He He's clearly got worm taint coming off of his clothes and likely some of it is deep within his own soul. Are you the ones who killed... killed it? Killed what? There's no one else within earshot. There's... there's no reason to play dumb. I just want to hear Playing you say Playing dumb. It. Some of us are actually just dumb. <laughs> I want to hear you spit forth the vile words of what you think you're doing. And what a mistake you've made. Hmm... Mistake? Eh. It was unpleasant to make make it. The wolf was actually quite kind, as he throws another handful of red crumbs. But if it wasn't me, someone else was just going to come along. So why give up my family's house, their earnings, the chance for my children to go to a good school, on moral hang-ups that wouldn't do a damn thing? Because you're a tool. You're being used as a tool, and they're going to throw you in the trash like a broken toy. Yes, you're not wrong. But if I make myself valuable enough, increase the potency of the serum eventually, well, they'll have to throw me away later. And later means that my two boys and my girl go to college. It means that my wife gets to have an excellent life insurance policy. It means that I can help my children grow, have them learn, and if I didn't- To see how long he's stalling to make sure we're not about to get ambushed. Okay. Uh, perception learns, what's the difficulty gonna be? I'll go with seven, uh... since you're busy listening to him. There doesn't appear to be anyone else around. He seems, if you want to gain a, get a sense of his earnestness, you can do perception empathy. Will my, will my fetish help with that? 
Uh, what's your fetish? It gives me a plus three, or it adds a plus three difficulty to anyone that's trying to lie to me with, with words. Yeah, you can use that. Okay. Uh, while he's rolling for that, I want to jam any technology that's on this guy's person. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the what was the role again, Keegan, to determine his earnestness? Uh, perception empathy. Perception empathy. Can I activate heightened senses, please? Yes, you may. Thank you. What's the difficulty going to be for, for his earnestness, Keegan? We're going to go difficulty eight, just because his voice lacks a lot of cues. Sure. Ah, oh, oh, look at that. Hot day. He seems earnest in what he's saying. Or at least he believes it. What do I need? You a line. I'm sorry, go ahead, Adam. Mm, uh, I was just going to ask, what do I need to roll for uh, jam technology? Jam technology is a Hamid gift, and it is... Scrolling up. Uh, you need to roll, spend one point of Gnosis and roll Manipulations Crafts, and you need to choose the level of... Complexity you intend to jam and less. All technological devices shaped or fabricated from materials like metals and plastics of that complexity within 50 feet cease to function for two turns per success. If you're choosing something as complex as a knife, that's difficulty nine. A phone is five and a computer is four. Pretty much I want to jam any communication devices on him, known or unknown. Okay, Honestly. that is a phone. So difficulty five. Okay. And what would you like to use with your heightened senses, Morgan? I am. I'm listening. Okay. You're listening. Oop, four. Okay. So for four t or so for eight turns, he can't use a phone. And Roy, is there anything you'd like to do? Uh, not specifically. Not that I can think of currently. Okay. He seems earnest, though. Morgan, you are hearing his heartbeat, and it is quickening for obvious reasons. Are you here to kill me? Me specifically? Probably not, but others, yes. But here you are, here I am. Where are they? Isn't anyone going to come to help you? No, they're busy fortifying. They don't generally think that your kind are sophisticated enough to find me. <laughs> appears that they're wrong. Broken clock is right twice a day. I guess so. Was this worth it? Was it worth it? Hmm. In the moment, I felt great, great joy at the success. W2 Serum has a 5% success rate, which is nothing to sneeze at. But... And the amount of extra compensation, the bonuses, and the life insurance will mean that my family is provided for, given the hazardous nature of my position as he reaches back into his bag, crushes a bunch of breadcrumbs, and throws them off out for the birds again. What did they tell you you were doing? Creating a weapon. A weapon to fight their enemies. And I was too smart for them to give me the same lie about super soldiers. You're some sort of mystic heroes who despise progress, despise my, the parent company that I work for. And I could not blame you for it. But as I said, they paid the bills and provided for my family. And even if I had moral scruples about what I was asked to do, someone else would have come in and done it. So I decided to do it more efficiently torture less wolves that way. Doesn't it concern you that a group that you believe doesn't believe in progress, knows where your family lives, knows you have three children and a wife, and already went to your house? It does concern me, yes. Are you going to kill them too? I know a lot of angry people. Me? No. Others? Oh, it depends. <laughs> Some have more scruples than others, like you said. Well, as he holds up his hand, this Fitbit will dispense any sort of information about W2 Serum to my superiors if you kill me right now. Can I get a perception empathy from everyone? Difficulty 
Six for everyone except Morgan. Your difficulty is five. Perception what? Empathy. Empathy. As soon as he shows the Fitbit, I want to use Control Simple Machine. <laughs> it's not a simple machine. Isn't that considered a cell phone-like yeah, device? Yeah, that's why it's jammed. You guys have been talking for two turns, so six more turns until the gift wears off and you'll have to spend another point of Gnosis. So, out of character. So that means possibly that whatever wireless cloud-based thing that is attached to his like life signs probably isn't working right now. So that means we could possibly kill this, kill this guy and take his Fitbit. And then, and then wear it. And like we don't know if it's based off of his life signs though. Yeah. You're right. Like that out of character hope- conversation's gotta get cut off because your characters don't have that much time t- in the moment to think about those repercussions. Uh anybody? D- <laughs> um Morgan, you detect that he's lying. I uh, I I just smoke. You took the information with you. You have it there now, that thing on your wrist. Oh, no, 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 no. This this has access to my account on Endron. Or, I'm sorry, this has all my information on my Magadon account. That's all. Even to the bitter end, you're a company man, huh? I try. I mean, it's a Fitbit. It's not a piece of fucking spy gear, Jesus. <sighs> Shit. But some of us were dumb, right? But I wasn't hinting at me. <laughs> bit, bit <laughs> sends information. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You're funny for a dead month. You could always whisk me away. I could cover for you. Decrease the... I could work slower, decrease the efficiency of the program, make sure that they don't increase the percentage effectiveness of the W2 serum, if you let me live. How's his heartbeat? His heartbeat is still going quick, but he seems truthful, too. He's clearly afraid of death. Well... Kevin, Kevin... Can I call you Kev? Kev, mate. If you're so afraid of death, then why, why would you work for a company like that? Because there's almost no choice. I wanted to work in pharmaceuticals, and I got to work on pharmaceuticals. I got to work on drugs that save people. But, well, when you make a deal with the man at the crossroads, sometimes it costs you your soul. Yeah, and your life. Well, I hope it was all worth it, and I hope, truly, honestly, I do hope that uh, that your kids do grow up and have a good life without you. Well, at least one of you is intending to let them live. His heartbeat actually slows down a little bit as he goes, well, do what you have to do. Just look at the others and go, what, what, like, I don't, I, this is that that's as far as I got, guys. That's as far as I got. That's that's it. It's your turn now. Go. That's an effort that I do not want to go through. So uh off you go. Off you go. Yeah, but going up against black spirals, that's not out of your range, huh? That was a miscalculation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely a fucking miscalculation. Would you all shut up and just do what you're going to do? Christ, I'm getting older by the second. They're hoping he dies of old age before any of them have to do the dirty. <laughs> we're we're Michael, out in the public. <laughs> Michael, let's let's take this man for a walk. Gladly. Yes, yes. Show him the show him the doll. I said we'll just I'll gesture for him to stand up. He stands up. I'll take the bird seat from his hand. Okay. I'll throw it on the ground for the pigeons. Thanks. Absolutely. They said you they said they liked you. Closes his eyes. Alright, Michael, let's go. Alright, let's take a walk. And so he takes a walk with you. Out of sight. And it's ended there. Cora, there's been enough time to where you can pass into the physical world again. Fantastic. Woohoo! Alright, so you 
pass through. Okay. And there's Morgan here. (laughs) There's Morgan there and Roy. Morgan and Roy. Fantastic. Nope, there's just Morgan here. Oh. (laughs) Still mad at Roy. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, welcome to the other side. It's Mm. all fun and games here, and uh, they've they've taken them to show him the door. Can captures the moment. Roll a mulligan to possibly have captured that entire conversation on his camera. Yeah, okay. sure. Use your mulligan. You've got. He recorded the whole thing. Oh, I wanted to like actually like roll for it or something. Like I, I didn't want it to just be a cop out. I mean, there's there's no reason to roll for it though. Okay. If there if there's no chance of failure or there's no no like I didn't want to make to it failure, obvious. I didn't want him like standing there with the camera. Like, Got it. Okay. Then I yeah. will allow that as a dexterity crafts. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going for. This is like discreet. Like Okay. Didn't want to make it seem like this guy was performing for the camera, you know. Mhm. So, dexterity crafts. Difficulty 6. Yes. 3. Okay. Hey, look at that. So you're able to do it stealthily and your clothes get in the way of the lens only a few times. Awesome. Adds effect. Yes. That's not bad cinematography. That's just a feature. Yep. All right. That loose end is taken care of. I guess uh, Zeb and I will be walking back to the group and see Cora there. And Kyle. And Kyle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so... At it? Done here? The man is dead. Perfect. R- rather willingly, like a lamb to the sacrifice. You know what he was getting himself into? I respect him for it bending that much. He wasn't a fool. He didn't beg. This won't give you much closer, Michael. That pain's not gonna go away. Hopefully a little bit. Not until those spirals are taken care of. All right, boss, where next? All right, now that Fomori's vein is out of the ember, we're going to go back. <laughs> and we're going to try and get that information about the werewolf serum um, destroyed from the computers that they have it on. Okay. So, computer folks, this is y'all. Incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> no? You're going into the really? Umbra to destroy it. Yeah. If, but that's not like... I guess. Okay. If if possible, we can go back and assembly and speak to the Master of Right to see if they have any spirits they, they deal with commonly. I'd prefer to have a guide before just proceeding out into that portion of the, of the web. I don't know the Weaver's domain particularly well, unless maybe Michael or some others here do. I know a lot about the physicalness of computers, the umbral nature of computers, though. Uh, I could try to apply what knowledge I have. I have a general understanding of it. Let's not, not a fucking sausage. Bye. Bye. Let's not dawdle no. near the person we just murdered. Yeah, let's, let's get near him. Walk away right now. What, that did, you, had, uh, did you back? guys not bury him? Well, like, we should go into the umbra, though, right? Yes. So that we're not seen walking away from here anyway. To the Umbra! Okay, <laughs> rolls please. It is now difficulty 7 due to the fact that the spiders got annoyed and increased the strength of the gauntlet because some things kept trying to pass through. Oh, this is <laughs> so, Cora takes 30 seconds. Michael, ta- it's instantaneous. Zeb, you spend 5 minutes meditating. And Infernal Alphas, you are trapped in the physical side unless you decide to use a mulligan chip. I'll use a mulligan chip. Okay. So, (laughs) five minutes. And you all pass through back into the Umbra. I I guess as we're traveling, I pop out the camera and I just kind of rewatch the scene that uh, just took place. Okay. So, the way to get to the... Computer is to go to the 
Magadon facility in the Umbra. Okay. Fantastic. This place. Why do we keep coming back here? Because there's more work to be done. <laughs> <laughs> you pass through the fences in the Umbra and reach the parking lot of the Magadon Labs and Pharmaceutical Distribution Center. To find the path to the server, you will have to go to, excuse me, you'll have to find the right symbols. Okay. Okay, so is it going to be like a perception occult or int occult? Perception occult. Zeb tells you all to fa fan out as you all start looking for the signs, and you do. You find three signs of sorts. The first is that you find a path that you identify through smell. Morgan discovers it through the instruction of Zeb, thanks to her heightened senses. It is an acrid smell, like the smell of cleaning products that don't necessarily cause cause sterilization, but simply cover up the smell of decay. You also find a path that is flanked by neon wires. These neon wires look familiar to you. Michael, could you give me an intelligence technology roll? Sure. And Zeb, you find a final, you find a final path that is spritzings of pills and drug containers that are of nondescript nature, each one going in different ways. Captures the moment, you notice that the neon wires are those of server cables. Okay. My vote is on the acid smell. My vote's on the pills and bottles. So, like, we're looking for data that's on a server right yes so on a formula of chemicals sure but like this the server cables would to my mind lead to a server do they all lead to the same server well, zeb could i get an in, can i get an intelligence occult absolutely difficulty six this journey is all about about the symbolism and the and the threads that weave together to form our narrative i think we're thinking in a too linear way that you're merely destroying a file inside of a computer somewhere. Remember the essence that the, the, that the right master explained was the essence of the information that we're destroying. So each one of these leads to that path of that information. We are striking out knowledge, evidence, remnants, everything. Uh, we are you know, erased from creation. So I think we should attempt to think in that manner. And each one of these is gonna take us off in a different way through different senses, different experiences. Well. He did say he works in pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals. So I say we follow that path. I will go wherever you go. Just pick one. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm also inclined to believe in the smell of that taint is something that all of us are inclined to follow. So again, I mean, if we're divided on a vote, we've at least uh, narrowed down two. Maybe not. I don't I don't think this is something that we narrow down. I just think we split and go to all three. The path is the there's the one path is never correct. It's multiple paths. I I think you got to get rid of the physical evidence. Then you got to get rid of the past evidence. Then you got to get rid of the thoughts of of it for future use. That may very well be, but again, the dangers and others that know of it, especially other creatures stronger than some of us, better to stick together. Yeah. Yes and no. It's always better to stay together as a pack. I'll bite my tongue. Well, I'm certainly not the master of tactics, so which direction? I'll just kind of walk over to the entrance to the server the server lines leaving, leading to the bottles and pharmaceutical things. And I'll stand there. And I'll do the same, but with the acid smell. Already heading down towards the pills. I will, uh, I'll follow Morgan on that. <laughs> okay. Just commit. <laughs> All right. Uh, Majority wins. I hate this because I really don't want to actually follow the group. I'll, I'll just, 
I just turn back and I look at George. I give him that look of if you George. Can follow up, George, sorry. <laughs> Roy. <Roy's laughs> <at> George. <laughs> George. The guy sorry. who died? The guy who died, yeah. Well, I turn, I look at Roy, I give him that look of if you do not follow me, I will murder you in your sleep. I'm not really afraid, but whatever. <laughs> you should be, you oh, can't you soak be. the glaive. <laughs> More people have died over claves than anything else. I already killed two people for my incompetence. I can do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Zinger. As you start moving down the path, the pills begin to become more commonplace. The building doesn't seem to be getting any closer. As you start to see coins, tatters of dollar bills, fragments of machinery used in medical practices. And as you turn a corner, the warehouse actually splits like a picture that's lined up. You know those paintings through steps that form one coherent picture to look two dimensional? That is what the buildings look like as they split into a city. And you see the massive city with screams and banes shrieking and spiders fighting. And the path mm -hmm. takes you into the metaphysical city of the worm. This place resembles, is massive as there are conveyor belts and meat hooks flying in all directions as you see things that look like cocooned humans, but not humans. The cocoons look like it's actually their flesh as dribbles of vomit move down their faces as they're thrown into places and there are screams all about pills and money flashing in all directions as you see corrupt weaver spirits wrapping their tainted tarnished threads around the spirits of money as they scream forming the foundation of several of the buildings pills landing and crashing in all directions so pete what was that cora jeez oh pete Okay. Or Both if you prefer, holy out. fuck. <laughs> All three of those will get edited out. That's fine. <laughs> As you hear, or I should say, Kyle, Morgan, Roy, and Cora hear a familiar voice. Oh, God. No. Uh, I swear uh, to God. Uh, it's been a while. Ah, right, so <laughs> ah, I like this guy. No. 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 <laughs> As no. you see okay. these uh, spider-like arms with human hands, bleeding sores, and track marks all along the arms, spindly long, carrying a bulbous body that seems ready to rip. Some of the sores you notice have sucking, gummy mouths, cooing as their tongues lash out and swallow pills and cash as you see spirits of money shaking in his pockets and the cigar hanging from his crooked mouth and his ten eyes hanging overhead. I've been busy since you've been gone. Oh, I look I turn it. around and I start walking away. Nope. <laughs> uh, it, it seems you have. How many terrifying creatures do you all know? Too many. All of them. Frankly. Ah. Oh, you got new friends, I see. Well, we did run into a little problem. A little oh. problem? Mm-hmm. Somebody, and I have a mighty strong suspicion who, destroyed a bunch of windows, caused a bunch of damage, slowed down production of what keeps me full. I wonder who that could be. I'll I'll gaze up, you know, with the one good eye. I did. Hmm. Oh, very, no. very unsportsmanlike. Very unsportsmanlike. As you see these kind of like crooked, twisted workers stepping out. They look like factory workers, though their heads hang down. They have kind of these feelers moving down. Their, the, their pinkish human-like face as they reach out in all directions. You don't really see a mouth 
just these tendrils of human flesh as they move and the tendrils seem to wrap around and move their bulbous muscles and sharp claws. Now, I'm not a fan of production slowdowns. I would like a little old apology, maybe a little old essence. Gnosis. It's a good bread of life! Well... I'm afraid I'm fresh out, but I will give you an apology understanding that you play a mighty important role within creation. I hope you get what you deserve. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh. Boys, hold him down. Oh, no. All right, I will ship to Krenos. Yep. <laughs> my friend Addiction. What my friend here is trying to say is that he is very apologetic for breaking those windows. And it was just something that had to be done. At, Your at friend the time. says, be glad I only have one eye left. And I'm not afraid to use that one, too. <sighs> That's a Addiction's initiative. <laughs> oh, right. All right. Well, I guess we're gonna defend. I I want to rip everyone's throat out right now because they are too murder hobo y. No, you murder hobo. I, I did nothing. You, you mean murder like hobo, hobo the bad guys? Shouldn't give, uh, <laughs> give to that served the worm? Hey, you know? God. Wherever it dwells, wherever it breeds. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know what the end of life is. I'm cool. Mm, okay. I mean, there's six of us. And how many people were there last session? Four. Two? Three. Oh, four, okay. I think there were three of us, or four of... No, there were four of us against four. four rank four black spirals. Meanwhile, in the future, in two hearts, last words were, well, there's six of us. <laughs> and one of him. Ah. Uh... There's six of us. Maybe we can hold out a little longer than not at all. <laughs> the other problem that I'm probably going to be facing as Roy is that I can't necessarily be angry at everyone because, you know, worm. Hey, it's going to be great. Mm, you say that. And Best all, of our the last session. all of our next characters are. Hey, I had a great time last session. <laughs> Sometimes you get your butt kicked. That's the fun of the game. Sometimes you eat a buddy, less part of it. I'm still waiting on Cora to actually, like, talk to Roy, too. Oh, she's not gonna talk. She's gonna go full get a Fenris, though. I'm standing she's back for that. Gonna go, I'm she's just gonna go right in. <laughs> I'm so stoked for this part. <laughs> she's gotta put it on the back burner right now, because there's bigger things to handle. <laughs> and then, you know, all of a sudden, she's just gonna hit me out of nowhere. I'm gonna be like, what the hey. fuck? No. Three months I'm later. My guitar and start no. singing. Can you feel the love tonight? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Zeb, what do you plan on doing this round? <laughs> well, uh, odds are I'm getting attacked, so I think I'll spend probably most of my time dodging, followed by should I luckily or fortunately escape that it'll just be attacked. Should I say? Uh, well, you have to choose one or the other. Oh, is it? Okay, fine. Yep. Attack. Okay, so you're not going to dodge? Nope, fuck him. Let him come. Oh my god. Alright. Next is Thug number four, and he is going to attempt to grapple Zeb. Oh, what are you doing claw or bite, Zeb? Oh, it'll be claw. Okay. We'll just say you're clawing Thug four. Thug three, the tendrils will split open, the face will actually rip open, and it's going to spew vomit at Morgan. For God's sake, I was literally going to sit and do nothing and just walk. <laughs> All right, next is Morgan. Still, I'm still just going to do absolutely nothing. I'm just going to put my hands up and move back and be like, I am not getting involved in this petty fighting. This isn't petty. This is against the worm. Well, this is five of us then. Uh, call it four because we can still use him instead of, you know, fighting him. I was trying to leave. <laughs> was trying to go backwards. As soon as he came into the picture. Uh, the next thug is going to spew a different kind of vomit 
at Zeb. All right. The one that's spewing at Morgan is green. The one spewing at Zeb is yellow. Roy? I am actually going to use a gift because fuck you all. It is infectious laughter. It's a ragabosh gift. Okay. I'm trying to remember exactly what it does. But essentially it's um I make a joke about something and everyone stops doing what they do and they laugh. Alright. Um I will look that up right now. Alright. Sounds good. Next is Michael captures the moment. I will for my regular action, I'm gonna help defend the spew, I guess. Like from uh the one attacking Zeb. And I'm going to spend, I guess, what do I need to do to use steel fur? You will roll stamina science, difficulty seven. Each success adds one die to your soak pool for the rest of the scene. Okay. And so that increases the difficulty of any dexterity checks minus attack rolls by one. Okay, I'll spend a rage to do that. Because I'm already... Uh, you spend a willpower. Oh, I will spend a willpower. So then okay. I don't have much, but I'm not even in Krynos form, so... You will have to be in Krynos form to use steel, steel first, so you'll have to spend a point of rage to insta-shift as well. All right, will do. So that leaves me with that much, okay. And don't forget to add one point of rage for joining combat. Okay, sweet. Difficulty six? Yes. Or was it? Bam! Difficulty seven, I apologize, but... So four minus successes. one, so, so four successes. Yep, so you have four extra dots of soak. Alrighty, sweet. All right. When it gets to your turn. Anything that attacks you before your initiative slot still gets to hit you with your regular soak pool. Kyle. Uh, so first, I'll activate Fangs of Judgment. Okay. Does that work against Banes? I... Oh, actually, that's what I meant to ask. I meant to ask if it works against what his thugs are, because it very well might not. You don't know, because you don't recognize these banes. Okay, well then I will, since I don't know, I will activate it just in case. Okay. Because uh, it's For the it's day, just right? a willpower, and it lasts a day, yeah. <laughs> and then, sorry, I, I guess I don't actually have a card for my... Uh, Luna's armor, so I'll I guess I'll think on that. Otherwise, I'm gonna spend uh, two rage. One is going to be to dodge, um, and then I'm going to attack uh, Thug. Uh, I think one in one in three aren't being attacked, right? Yeah, I believe so. I'll do a claw for each of them. So Thug one and three. Thug three. Okay. Cool. Thug 2 is going to rush at you, Kyle, and his body is going to split open and his intestines are going to latch on and try and dump uh, bile on you. Addiction is going to look at Zeb and he is going to hang overhead He's going to open his mouth, and this sentient goo is going to try and go into his mouth. All right. <laughs> Spicy. Ew. Huh? All right, and... There's one spewing at Morgan. Is she being protected in some way? Uh, no. Not, no. And, uh... uh is spewing at Zeb and addiction is also spewing at Zeb. Is Zeb being protected in some way? No. Cool. Can't be in two places at once. Um, Zeb isn't. Here. Zeb isn't dodging. Morgan is right. Morgan is just walking away. To so just let that thing puke on her. Uh, okay. If Morgan uh, dies, you can just claim her glave. <laughs> yeah, like, it's the it's no, that's that's like no. easily that's easily the second worst thing you've done to try and get a glaive. I'm, I don't <laughs> want to do that. 
that's not what I wanted to do. Actually, no. it would go to her packmate first. I have no qualms killing you, though. <laughs> you won't kill Morgan, but you will kill Roy. <laughs> he hates. Does, he hates Cora. Does Does Morgan feel loved? I wonder if she feels loved. I don't think so. Nah, Morgan. <laughs> Morgan doesn't feel, feel anything. <laughs> so we're going to attack Thug One, and we're gonna claw twice at him. Okay, so you're going to claw. Yeah. Thug one twice. All right, let's make that roll. All right. <clears throat> Hell yes. Okay, three roll over. Th roll 15. Do it, Sam. All right, so you did nine damage. Yeah. Thug nice. one is dead. Fantastic. All right. Makes me very happy that I actually rolled something decently. <laughs> What's uh? What's your willpower, Zeb? My willpower is six. Right. I'm sorry, Zeb. I wish I could have gotten up to addiction, but I don't think that Cora would have been able to get up there in time. Oh, whoops! That's, that's my about. fault. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So three successes. Zeb, you hear whispering in your head as you feel this kind of righteous. Fury filling you as you just hear in the back of your head, Boy, we're all addicted to something. You will be addicted to your anger, to your righteousness. You will let no slight slide. You will net let no insult go unchallenged. You will be everything as ugly as you was to me. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. That's why we don't play with addiction. It's true. Kyle, coming for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is dodgeable, yes? Yes. Well, maybe not with that roll, Keegan. <laughs> <laughs> <I was> right. <laughs> it wouldn't have been dodgeable, even with a slightly lower roll, with what you rolled. <laughs> oh, yes. Very true. All right, roll soap, please. So you took four points of damage as it runs up, its body splits as you see the like, tiny fragments looking like people scrambling and screaming to try and catch onto the other fragments that have la uh, latched off of its sides as the intestines just come to life, the ribs looking like teeth as they squeeze around you and the stomach just bursts in an acidic splash burning into your fur as you see sloths of fur and flesh slosh onto the ground as the intestines retract in and the little hands and the torn skin clasp each other desperately and pull the body back into one piece. That sounds like ag aggravated damage. It is lethal. Oh! Fantastic. <laughs> Lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and am I, does that grapple me as well? Nope. Okay. Um, so I guess first things first, I'm going to activate resist pain. Okay. Um, and then, uh, what's the role for healing? Is that just stamina? It's diff stamina eight? diff eight. If you get a success, you heal one point. Perfect. All right. So you heal one point of damage. Um, and to try and change my action, uh, it's... Spend, Spend a point a of willpower. Roll willpower, difficulty eight. Okay, I am going to do that as well. Okay. Burning through that willpower early, Tyler. I know, right? You succeeded. Perfect. Um, so I'm just going to change my attack on uh, Thug One since he's dead now. Okay. Um, to the thug that attacked me. All right. And the other attack will stay the same. All right, sounds good. So this is my original attack. Okay. That's all rollover. Uh, and now I need to know whether or not my it, fangs do the extra damage. They do not. Okay. These are spirits of the plight of working in a factory. Oh, that's super specific, but okay. <laughs> There's a specific spirit for everything. All right. Two damage. 
Okay, and then my next attack on the other thug. Yep. One roll over. Whew. I did not do a great job on those. He soaked. Okay. All right. All right, Michael, it's time to activate Steel Fur, which you already did. So you did that for your turn. Your Steel Fur is now activated. As you see, all of you see Michael's fur turn into like fur and wire, slightly pointy, increasing his soak as he looks almost cybernetic. Ooh, nice. That'd be cool if his steel fur turned into like razor wire. Yeah. All right, Roy, infectious laughter. All right. I am going to say with infectious laughter, we've got this spirit who's named after his addiction fighting people who are addicted or uh, communicating with people who are addicted to fighting. I find it hilarious that these people or the Garu are more addicted to this than addiction himself. All right. And And then I will roll. What is it? It is... Manipulation expression. The highest rage rating of anyone listening. Yep. So diff 10. Oh, God. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, I will spend point of willpower to get two immediate successes. Okay. Uh, nice. I said, fuck, what did I say? Expressions and... Manipulation. So that would be manipulation. Question one, four. Okay. Make that roll. Ten. Ten. Yes! Two successes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, feels good. You all stop, stop your actions and you start laughing. The spirit the thug spirits, you hear kind of a gurgle thing through no mouths, no lifts. So you hear the throat of. You know, when someone's laughing in their throat, but it's muffled because there's literally no mouth. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so uh, combat is ended. Why do I feel like I just saved our lives? Um, you could very well have. Uh, yeah. Um, addiction. We actually come here to further our agenda. We did not mean to offend anyone here and i quickly glance behind me as like a growl uh to shut the fuck up um and further uh we are just looking to find something within this area he takes a deep drag blows some of the smoke in your face gives you kind of a childish smile and goes good luck (laughs) Do I still look like an angry Sonic cybernetic the hedgehog? Yes, as the thugs kind of like <laughs> retract into the walls as you see the walls kind of grab them and pull them in as you hear kind of a fleshy <laughs> and addiction starts crawling up as you see him grabbing handfuls of money spirits and crunching them down as you hear the crunch and driplets of blood falling below going, as you hear him go, oh, so a bit rude. Good luck. I hate him. I hate him so much. He serves a purpose. I hate him. As you start moving off and looking for the threads that continue on, can I get a perception occult roll from you, Zeb? Uh, We're going to go with seven, given the chaotic nature of this place. You get another glance as you see the pills and things like that as it blends with that kind of sterilized smell. As that continues on, you then see the server wires, and then you see a great tower that seems untouched by the worm taint, or at least has significantly less of the worm taint now in front of you. Kind of zebble point. That seems to be the way. Are the wires leading that way? Yep, and the smell. Hmm, okay. As the smell starts to sort of dissipate. Okay. Uh, just a quick question. Since I have steel fur on, I couldn't go back into human form, could I? You could, but it would just go away. Your steel fur would go away. Oh, okay. Yeah, I eventually... At some point, I did that. Okay. 
So as you pass through, once again, the server, which looked like a, a tower, same panoramic view splits into several buildings and the lab and the city scape that you were once in are gone as there are spiders crawling everywhere as well as massive amounts of what appear to be spherical representations of various binary code swirling. There's thousands of them. It'll take a bit of investigating and we will find out how that investigation goes next time. Thank you to everyone who listened. We will catch you in our very next episode. Have a great night. Bye. 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 Bye.